All right, good evening and welcome to Sensual Talk. This is where we talk all things sensual, tantalizing, and sexy. I'm your host, Emanuela Fernandez. For centuries, people have been fascinated by our body's energy centers called chakras. Our sacred chakra is the most sensual chakra of them all. It is responsible for our sexuality, creativity, and sensual pleasure. Is your sacred chakra open to the world and is functioning properly? To answer all the questions related to the most sensual chakra is my friend, performer, peacemaker, and author of Brave Ecstatic Woman, Marav Richter. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for having me so at your home. welcome in my womb. Welcome to my womb. Now, for the people listening, that makes it sound kind of dirty, but it's not. It's my writing and meditation room. You know, men have a man cave, right? Yes, men, yes, they we do. take that for granted. Men deserve a man cave. Of course they do. Well, women deserve their own private space, their own feminine space, that space where you can put your things in and, and you know that they're there. It's cleansed, it's clean, it has great vibe and great energy, and I call it my womb. And I encourage every woman to have a womb of their own and come into their own private space. So welcome to my womb, everybody. Thank you so much for having us. I am so excited about tonight's conversation. I mean, As am I. we are going to yeah. have so much fun. We already, um, do. We already, we already do. do. We already do. Yeah. I mean, listen, we haven't stopped talking since pretty much I got here. And it's been <laughs> about, you know, uh, about an hour. So yeah. really, we haven't stopped talking. So yeah. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. I want to give a shout out to Dronish Media who is sponsoring us tonight. And of course, you are in for a great conversation. All things sensual, all things sexy. Tonight, this is happening at Morav's house, okay? Right. And also, we're live, so I dropped actually my question, so I'm going to pick it up. Because it happens right live. Out. These things happen when you're live. Listen, right? I've worked on live television for many years. There's nothing like, li like live television, but at the same time, that's part of the charm of working for live television. Right. So, anyway, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you can stay with us for the next 15 minutes or so. Morav has wealth of knowledge to share with you, so thank you for joining. Morav, so many things to talk about. So you are someone who is truly passionate about chakras. So mm. first of all, to some of you who are not as knowledgeable about the world of chakras and truly a fascinating world of chakras, what are our chakras? So great that you asked that because I get asked this all the time. And, and also my knowledge and my resources that I, how I came into learning about chakras. So I'll say chakras are just basically energy centers. Now, all schools of mystical thought have had a kind of template or, a, you know, have given an overlay of the human body. And in fact, the human body is a micro of the macrocosm. Uh, so in Kabbalah, you call it the spherot. And in the ancient Sanskrit, you call it the chakras. And today, our endocrinal glands actually line up. So science has kind of caught up with the ancient world of the spiritual, you know, the spiritualists, that basically our human body has energy centers. Today, we have them as the glands, as the endocrinal glands, and they produce certain hormones. But the ancients didn't have that kind of a painting and, and the map of the energy centers, so they called them the chakras. And they're, to make it, so I use the same terms, chakra, uh, because it's the most accessible, so people understand that, but they don't really understand, it's like a mystery. What are these things that people talk about called chakras and when they're out of balance? And it's really very simple. Our endocrinal centers, our hormonal balance, we are in a world so out of balance, and especially as women, we are hormonally imbalanced and we have all the things that come with that. And they are basically seven energy centers or seven endocrinal glands, seven chakras in our bodies, and they line up. And when we're in full balance with them, then we have this energy, this power, this vivaciousness, this joie de vivre. We, you know, you see a woman who walks into a room and all eyes turn to her right. and she doesn't necessarily, you know, it's not because she has the most expensive dress or that she's the, you know, sexiest size or that she has the best ha hair. It's not a matter of her physicality. It's a matter of the energy that she brings in and it's magnetic yes, and it, it is, is magical. And that's a woman who has had all of her energy centers, all her chakras, all her endocrinal glands in balance. And so and she's grounded in that. And I know a woman like this. Oh, it's, yeah? It's Marav Richter. Oh. <laughs> you know I me. Mean, yeah. Listen, 
this lady right here is an absolutely fascinating woman. I mean, mm, thank you, thank you. You thank name you. it, she knows about it. You know, if it's something related to sensuality, to pleasure, she mm. oozes pleasure, sensuality, and happiness, and joy, and joie de vivre, as yeah. uh, as Marav here said herself. So yeah. thank you very much for being that thank sensual you. woman. To me, thank she you. is the epitome of a sensual woman. So thank, thank you very you. much for that. So The ancients called that actually ecstasy. Ecstasy. And it, it really is ecstasis. It's when we're outside of ourselves. Today we call it flow. So there's something to be said about yeah. The Brave Ecstatic Woman, which yeah. is Marav's book, which right. you really should pick up. Yeah, um, being brave enough to be ecstatic. Absolutely, and, like it, and it does take courage. It does, it, it does, it takes courage, and it takes the courage muscle absolutely. to build that. We don't come to it naturally. Right. I wanna go and talk about our most sensual chakra, which is our sacred chakra, yes. or also sacred. known as our second chakra. Right. So let's talk about this specific chakra, sure. and what are the symptoms that sometimes people experience when they their sacral chakra is not functioning properly? 100%, so, and that is, I will say, 100%, especially in North America, North American women, we are all adrenal fatigued. We're go, 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 do, do, do. We've been given a rule book of, of happiness uh, that looks very, very different than what our bodies actually can sustain. So the sacral chakra, the second chakra, is in fact the seat, it, the endocrinal gland is the adrenals. And so what happens is when we have cortisol plunge in our system, which we all do because the cortisol is that stress form, of course. you know, the stress receptor, uh, what happens is cortisol actually, we produce cortisol, but in fact our body actually doesn't have a way of turning off cortisol. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we can do, so, so we've got adrenaline pumping in our body, we are fatiguing our adrenal. The only thing we can do to offset cortisol is to actually bring up the sacral chakra or that creative energy. So that's the only way to balance it. We can't actually turn it off. Once we have an, a cortisol spike, our adrenals start kicking into gear. So the sacral chakra actually is the seat of your creativity, your sexuality, your sensuality, and really it all comes down to creativity. I mean, it's just the creative center. It is your God-given right to be creative, to create. I mean, if you think of it, where do we create from? Where do we create life from? Is our womb center, is our, you know, as we're speaking in the womb, but is in our sacral chakra, is in our sacred, sacral center. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that wellspring of creativity, when we're not in balance with it, so when our adrenals are fatigued, we have a few manifestations that do happen. Uh, physically, we start to have very dry skin, dry hair, dry nails, right? And, and really that's figurative and indicative of dryness, of a dry life, of a life that isn't juicy, that we don't believe that there's enough wealth and juice and abundance and flow that, that is ready to come into our lives. So we start to be desert-like and sparse. And, uh, and, so and, the, um, and I'm sorry to interrupt, so it actually yeah. manifests itself physically. Physically, 100%. Uh, we start to have uh, hip problems, sciatica in pregnancy. We start to have hip, as we get older, hip dysplasia or hip stiffness because we haven't moved our hips and move that sacral chakra energy around. Uh, and then also, that, so that's the physical manifestation, so that's the literal, and then there's also the way that that comes into play with our mind, body, spirit. Uh, so we start to feel a lot of malaise. We start to feel really down, and down in the dumps, and not really being able to bring up our energy and kind of feel like, oh, well, you know, there's so many women have said, you know, I feel like there's something bigger out there. I just don't know what it is. I just can't create it. I just don't know, you know, there's something that's calling me, but I can't think of what it is. And that's a result of closing down or it not being aligned or in balance with your sacral chakra. So, uh, you know, from, you know, one in four women are on antidepressant medication. One in four Which women. Which is so sad. It's an epidemic. It's an epidemic. I mean, it's an epidemic. And really, the biggest thing that women are asking for is an infusion creativity, sexuality, and sensuality. And it all comes from the same source. And it all depends on our sacred chakra. Yes, yeah, it wow. comes from the exact same source. It is, it is exactly that thing that we can open, 
cures adrenal fatigue. Like I said, the only thing that can counterbalance cortisol levels is uh, sacral chakra, mm -hmm. is adrenals. You know, I read something very interesting as I was preparing for this interview, mm -hmm. is the fact that for some people, the closure and kind of disbalance of your sacral, sacral chakra actually sometimes manifests either as lack of libido, yes. right? But for also for some people, they actually feel almost the addictive patterns of sex, you know, to sexuality yeah. and sexual pleasure and sexual stimulation. Yeah. Because I mean, too much of a good thing is also not good for you. So there has to be that balance. I love is it that something, said that. Yeah, is it something that you've noticed in your practice? Completely. So in my book, what I've actually written is that in, for every one of our chakras, there is the, uh, what I, the shadow aspect, the too little energy, or the, the parts that we don't want to look at, or the overcompensation by a lot of do-do-doing, mm -hmm. which is a lot of masculine energy. And the same is true for the sacral chakra. Each one of our chakras has, and for the sacral specifically, there is the femme fatale energy. When we go into masculine sacral chakra mode, we become a femme fatale. We, balance, we base too much of our energy on our sexuality, on doing the sexuality, not even being in the sexuality. Very often the woman who is in femme fatale energy mm -hmm. actually doesn't really enjoy sex. It's just she, she's coming at it from a lack of perspective, right. so she wants more and more and more, more of it. But there's no that, none of that sensuality and pleasure That's involved. right, that's right. She's not Very interesting. being mm -hmm. in that sexuality. So fast. So it's not about the sense of sexuality or the sense of really being in her body. Mm -hmm. It's just about the conquest, which right. is a masculine element. Right. The, the right. very directed, the arrow, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna do that. Right. And then right. she's very femme fatale. And, and that exacerbates, that creates more adrenaline, more cortisol. Very, very fascinating right. stuff. But I want to get to the good part. So how do we get our sacral chakra back to balance? Ooh, great question. And I love that you ask that. And you know, I would invite women, I, we're not gonna do it today, mm -hmm. but I am gonna invite you and I'm gonna invite all the audience that we're gonna have another, we're gonna have a, a, a phase two, a repeat. Absolutely. Of, of this interview where we're really gonna look at some of the movement. Mm -hmm. Some of the movement involved in really opening up our sacral chakra. Uh, you know, I used to teach belly dance. That was uh, probably one of the things that really brought me into this mm -hmm. understanding of, of energy in how it works in real time you can conceptualize something you know you can read a book about flying an airplane or riding a bike but you, you have to actually do it uh, and belly dance teaching belly dance was actually one of the best ways that I got to see this energy around people and I used to teach it uh, in a dance studio where we would start and have eight week sessions mm -hmm. and there was one woman who came and she signed up for one week of eight week sessions and then she signed up for the second session, the second term of eight week session. And sometime during the middle of that of that second eight week session she came to me and she said, you know, I just want to tell you something. I have been trying to get pregnant the last ten years. I did IVF. I did, you know, every sort of pill and, and potion and you know and lotion that you can imagine. We tried everything. My husband and I tried everything. Until I finally decided, forget if it doesn't happen, happen naturally, I'm not going to do it, and I'm going to just, you know, enjoy myself and go take a belly dance class. And she said, and I took your belly dance class, and now she got pregnant. I'm pregnant. This, this is exactly so what powerful. happened. And why did it happen naturally once she let go of the stress, so the cortisol has now, you know, balanced, but also she is making these movements. You know, belly dance didn't start as this thing that we see it of almost like a cheerleader, you know, showing off to an audience. It started women dancing for women, telling the stories, grandmothers to granddaughters, mothers to daughters, aunts to nieces, you know, sisters to sisters, teaching each other all these secrets about the way that our bodies move and how to move energy. And so one of the best ways, and I promise, I promise you we will come back one day and actually move our bodies in this, you know, and come on alive to do it, but one of the best ways is that hip movement that's called the figure eight. Canceling out energy as you're moving this way and that, you're opening up and expanding that sacral chakra in a physical way, sending the body the message that 
I love and appreciate the sensuality that my body has. I am open to receiving. I am flowing. I am in this maya, this water flow. And I'm allowing myself to open to that. The great thing is about that is that we as women need to move our bodies in that way for our muscular strength, for our spine, and for our energy, and for our reproductive system. And the biggest thing is for our creativity, and sexuality, and sensuality. So movement is one of the things that are going to help us restore yes. the proper functioning of our sacral chakra. That is one of the ways, one, one of the very distinct literal ways. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, any kind of creativity, anytime you start pouring your creativity, like I told you earlier, I didn't think I was an artist. Mm -hmm. I never thought I was an artist because artists drew and painted and right. created something. It was more of a visual art. It was more of a creation. Mm -hmm. You know, you even as as being a culinary expert or a cul you know a lover, a, mm -hmm. a culinary connoisseur, right. that is in fact creation. It is absolutely. I have a friend who sets a, who invites me for dinner. She orders in. She doesn't cook anything, but she invites me for dinner, and the table is set so lovely such a and that's beautiful. art and that's creativity that's as well. art yeah. yeah so she is creating a creative culture a creative muscle a, mm -hmm. a, a strengthening of her creativity right. just by you putting the beautiful napkin mm -hmm. and and folding it in just the right way so that it falls just so beautifully on the yeah. plate that's creativity so take advantage take an opportunity to be creative in every aspect of your life right have your life look like art and really find something that works for you. I mean, you know, I spent so many years looking for something that worked, that's something that really tantalized me. And I mean, it, it takes years. And I mean, some of us are not raised to necessarily um, cultivate mm. our creative sides right. and our sensual yeah. sides, right? We, you know, so people will say to us, well, no, you, like we were talking earlier, right? Yeah. You need to find yourself a real profession. You need, to, you need to be an academic. Yeah. You need to, you know, fine. have a job yeah. that pays bills and things like, and of course be it's realistic. important. Be realistic, yeah. right? So we are raised with all these messages. Right. And, uh, and then it's hard to really find something that resonates with you and inspires you to live that sensual life. Right. So, you know, I'm so glad that you're talking about this, Marav. And I mean, right. we could, you know, go on with this conversation, but I mean, we, we, we are kind of <laughs> yeah. out of time. And, yeah. and, and I really yeah. think that we have to do another, um, another live, another... Let's promise. Yeah. Let's promise. What let's do you do think? It. We'll dance. We'll do some belly we'll, dancing, Marav. We'll do some. Well, how about we call it beyond belly dancing? Beyond belly dancing. Sensual yeah. dancing. Sensual. Well, that's right there. Like, I mean, I'll. I'll do that. With you. <laughs> yeah. This is Marav. We just I'm, created something. We just created. We something. just created. And I think that our chakras just got like, aligned <laughs> just a little bit more. <laughs> Yeah, Marav, this is this is so much fun. I thank you so much for being a part of Sensual Talk. Thank you. So many things to talk about. However, you, tonight's uh, communication with Marav doesn't end here. You can connect with Marav, and uh, one of the ways to connect with her is purchasing her book, The Brave Ecstatic Woman. Fantastic read. Probably one of the best books I've read in the past year or so. Wow, that's I mean, a big honor. Thank you. Really, yeah. really fantastic. So, you know, and really start a sensual journey of your own. I hope that this serves just as a, as a small reminder that anyone can do it. It's accessible to you. It's accessible in your home. You do not have to, you know, join a big movement or be, or become a big, a part of a big sensual movement. You can really start in, as I always say, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your home, in, in your basement. You don't have to have a specific you know, space that maybe, you know, inspires you or, or, or in some ways is, uh, you know, something that other people would call an idyllic place for meditation, for reconnection uh, with your sensuality. You can really do it in a place that works for you, that is accessible to you. And I really hope that you found this episode to be just as inspiring as I did. I want to give a shout out to Drone Media once again for sponsoring us tonight. Of course, more sensual talk is coming your way and really so many things to talk about but please talk about it to your friends talk about it to your family um, you know this really will inspire you to begin a sensual journey of your own 
So thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time on Sensual Talk. I'm Emanuela Fernandez. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was so much fun. So much fun. Did you have fun? I had a great time. We're still. You, you are the ultimate sensual. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm going to come over here. It's Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And if anybody, hi, everyone. Back to you guys. If you guys enjoyed that, that was lovely. That was my friend Amanda.